Welcome back. Earlier in the show, hairstylist Jason Lee shared some pro tips on how to properly trim your hair from home with no regrets using scissors. Now we're getting a lesson in cutting with clippers. So many of our viewers at home have written in asking about how to cut short hair. Um, and I think a lot of you wanna help your partners as well. So we've got tips on how to handle this for the first time. All right, Jason, take it away. What do we need to know about the clippers? Well, for sure, Tracy, it's definitely a little bit more challenging to use clippers than it would be to, let's just say, trim your bangs or trim some split ends. Uh, but we're gonna break it through, uh, break it down for you a little bit. I will tell you really quickly, uh, when I first started doing hair, I had to learn how to cut uh, hair, uh, clipper hair on my brother. Uh, and the very first time I went to go do it, um, I used a very, I must have been a zero guard, and it was like completely bald when I first did that first cut. Um, very difficult <laughs> because you can't disguise it too, too well. <laughs> And he wasn't too thrilled, but he <laughs> lived with it for about two and a half, three, three weeks. So hopefully everybody can learn from my mistakes. Let's talk a little bit about clippers and what you need to know. So this is a clipper, and these are guards that come with it. So you can typically pick up a kit. Uh, you can, I've seen them at drugstores, I've seen them at hardware stores, you can get them online. They're pretty easy uh, and accessible these days. But they come with different size guards. And what you wanna know is that the smaller the number, uh, and as, as an example, a zero, which is probably what I used on my brother, is the shorter the hair. So a zero usually equates to like bald, pretty much. And then the higher the number is going to be the longer the hair. So we're going to start off with a three and a half, a four. And what I've done is I've brought back another friend. <laughs> and this time, what we've done <laughs> is that we've actually taped off, if you can see here, all the way around, from temple to temple, and what that's going to do, what that does, is that's gonna be our section. Now, if you have longer hair up top, what you'll do is that you'll actually comb out the hair on wet hair and you'll clip it up and get it out of the way. But for people who have short hair, this is a great way. It's like a guide almost. It's like, a, it's like when you're painting and you know where to stop. So we're gonna use this as our guide for what we're gonna do when we're gonna use the clipper. Again, I would start with the larger number, maybe a three and a half of four, and you're not gonna cut so much off right away. And that way, there's a couple of reasons for that. One is that you're not gonna make any mistakes, but two, as we go a little bit higher up, we actually wanna leave a little bit more length. And I'll explain that in a little bit. So you would go through and you would go close to the, and you would kind of pull out like this. So the idea is this wrist motion that I'm doing, I'm flicking outwards, and that will really help you to leave a little bit of hair because at some point we're gonna have to connect this downwards. Once you go through and you actually clean up around to this point, you're gonna change your guard and you're gonna go a little bit shorter. So let's just say we go in with like a two, something a little bit shorter that's gonna be a little tighter and you'll go back in and you'll only go halfway up, still doing that flicking of the wrist motion. And eventually what you'll get is this really blended line. Now, once you've done that, uh, you're going to let down the hair or you could take up the tape and you're now gonna have this really heavy line right around here, okay? Because this area here has to connect. And this is where you'll see hairdressers taking their comb and their scissors and they're gonna be kind of blending out that, that corner. You're gonna see a corner here. So you have to spend a little time kind of working your way around and cleaning that up. Um, that's probably the hardest part. If you have um, straight to wavy hair, you could even use a texturizing shear which would help blend it a little better. Texturizing shears aren't great for people with curly hair. Once you get that done and you get that blended, you're gonna go through the top area, and you've seen us all do this, where we, where we cut the hair. You're gonna take the section at, at like this and just kind of cut all the way through, and eventually it's gonna blend. My suggestion always is to take a step away, take a look at what you're doing. Don't go in too close, don't go in too fast. And then the last thing that you're going to do at the end is use one of these guys, which is what we call a little edger. And it's just a little guy, or you could use a zero clipper uh, and just kind of clean up that neckline. And when you go around the ear, you would fold down the ear and just kind of clean it up this way. You know, again, you want to go slow, you want to take your time, but if you kind of follow these tricks, uh, you could probably do a, a very decent job um, at doing it. And if you really are kind of nervous at making too many mistakes and you don't want to go too crazy with it, I would say just clean up around the sides. That'll make somebody feel a lot better if this is cleaned up a little bit. And then what you can do is you can leave all the heavy lifting to the pros when you get back an appointment. Absolutely. If we're looking a little shaggy these days, everyone's going to forgive you. But those are really good tips, Jay. Thank you so much for that.